My original idea was to name this video Acoustic Phonetics for Dummies. But first, I assume that the for Dummies name is copyrighted. And second, this name I've chosen has more to do with the, the name of the channel. But aside from the name, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be talking about Acoustic Phonetics and I'm going to be assuming an audience which, like myself, hasn't done a degree in a career related to either physics or mathematics and who has at least some basic knowledge of phonetics. Now I'm going to start from what I think is more useful and I'm going to develop that in later videos. This one in particular is about vowels. Now this thing which, as I always say, looks like you gave a three-year-old a black pen is called a spectrogram. And within this blot you can see there are some darker areas. Well, these darker areas are called formants. Let's highlight them. And let's name them. No, you're not allowed to choose the names, they're not puppies. Scientists say we should name them from bottom to top, so this is the first formant, the second one, third, fourth, and there is a hint of a fifth one too there, which is not always present. Now, as I said before, they're not puppies. But what formants are, or where they come from, is not relevant yet. The important question this far is what information can they give us about vowels? Well, this is a spectrogram of my own voice saying the Spanish vowels I, A, E, O, O. If you pay attention, you'll see it's the two first formants which change the most. Now, what information do these changes give us? Well, let's compare it to this drawing, which I'm sure you will recognize. The height of the first formant is inversely proportional to the height of the tongue. So the higher the tongue, the lower the formant. So we can assume that the open vowel R will have the highest first formant, and the closed vowels E and U will have the lowest. So here we see that the first formant for R is around 800 Hz, whereas the first formant for E and U are around 300 Hz. There's a little problem here because the proximity of the formants is full in the software, but see? And also the first formants for the mid vowels A and O, are accordingly in the middle. Notice I keep saying around. Although you can find average numbers, the exact numbers will vary from person to person and even from utterance to utterance. I mean, after all, we are human beings. Yeah, me too. Now, as for the second format, we can say its height is proportional to front mass. So we can assume that the front vowels, A and E, will have the highest second formants, whereas the back vowels, O and U, will have the lowest ones. And once again, we are right. The second format for A is around 1800 hertz, and that for E is around 2200 Hz, whereas that for O is around 1000 Hz, and that one for U is around 900 Hz. And finally, the one for the central file, R, is appropriately around the middle. Well, we have some disagreement among authors here. Some say the lip positions affect the frequencies of all formants, and some say it's only, or at least mostly, the second one which is affected. I am in no position to settle differences amongst big boys, but if I have to believe my ass, I would have to say it's mostly the second and third formants which are affected. Which does not mean that the other formants are not, but at least as far as I can see, the differences in the frequencies of other formants are, I would say, negligible. Well, spread lips raise the formants and rounded lips lower them. Here's a spectral realm of myself going from a spread E to a rounded one. Another difference produced by lip positions can be seen in the volume of higher formants. Now, where do you see volume in the spectrogram, you may ask? Well, darkness is volume. So the darker, the louder. You can see here that the volume of higher formants is reduced as the lips are rounded. Well, diphthongs will predictably show movement. 
This is me saying I. Notice how the formats separate as we would expect for a change to a higher and fronter position. Remember, higher means lower first format, fronter means higher second format. So what's the usefulness of this all? Well, if you're doing research on vial qualities, for instance, the spectrum will give you physical evidence of whatever point you're trying to make. For example, this is something I've been working on myself. If you take the traditional description of English vial number 9, you would expect the second format to be low. But this is me saying shoes, and as you can see, such expectations will be wrong. The reason for this is that the sound has changed quite significantly, and it has become a central to front vial, with definition for those using the central version, but that's not the case here. Also, if there's a student with a problem you cannot identify, the spectrogram may help you. For example, this is me imitating a typical mispronunciation of the word Thursday, and also saying it correctly later. You can see that the second format is around 200 Hz higher for the wrong version. So this means that the problem is my tongue is too front. I'm actually saying an E, Thursday. Now you can check the links below for the software used to produce these spectral runs and for some statistics on average Fulman values for English files. And next time we'll talk about consonants. See you then and thanks for watching.